Hey folks and welcome back and in my previous video which I've linked somewhere here I had created a Kubernetes custom resource definition and deployed it onto a Kubernetes cluster. Now in this video we'll be looking into how we can actually create a Kubernetes controller using Spring Boot application so that it handles any kind of custom resource definition instance creations, deletions or updations. So with this let's get started. We're going to go to this project here. Now in this we have a Spring Boot application here wherein we just have one class here that is a main class here. So this is the basic stuff that we usually do to start the application right. So this is for the Spring Boot application. Now actually to make the controller working we need some dependency. So first of all let's go to the POM file. In the POM file we need to have the Spring Starter Web Flux dependency here and the Kubernetes Java client here. And that's it. So that's all that we need right now. Now to actually create this particular controller, that is a Kubernetes controller, we need some various parts for this. So the three things that we need is the API client, the client to actually talk to the Kubernetes cluster. Then we have something called as a shared index informer. And then we have the controller itself. So let's actually understand what this particular parts are. So we have this shared index informer. So we are creating a particular bean of this shared index informer. And what this bean does is it's, it's more like a particular cache to actually sync up the data for the custom resource definition instances, what have been created onto the cluster. And this keeps a particular local copy of all the instances that have been created onto the cluster. So that as a controller, we don't have to keep on polling the cluster to see if any new resource instances have been created. So here we have the shared informer factory with which we are going to actually create this particular index informer, which requires a generic Kubernetes API object. Here we specify the classes that we need to monitor. Now, if you see how this plus particular classes get generated right so for this i have this particular code here in this bash script so what this bash script does is it actually takes my custom resource definition and then it actually creates a temporary directory on which my classes will be generated and then we have this docker image now what this docker image does is it actually creates a kubernetes cluster using docker and then after it applies this particular crd definition and then afterwards it generates class files from there now using these class files we can directly inject it into our controller and then work with these class files so we don't have to create the class files for the custom resource definition manually i'm going to run this here so with this it actually created our class files now, where are these class files? So these class files are actually present at this location. So let's go to this location here. And as you can see, it has created some class files for us at this particular location. Now, how these have been created is based on this properties that we have specified here. So here I'm specifying the group ID in the reverse format, while the package name I'm specifying is the group ID in the normal format. Then finally, the output that we want so now these generated files which are there i have already imported them as models here and you can see them in this section this side now what we are going to do is let's go back here so this is a reference of these models that have been generated and i'm using them here okay through this i'm creating this shared index inform now here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a controller now before creating the controller let's actually look at the reconciler now, what is this reconciler? Now, the reconciler is the one which is the most important thing that I feel. What this thing does is whenever a particular resource has been created, deleted or updated, we get a, a request which is here. We get a request that we need to handle. So now we created the shared index informer which monitors any changes for our custom resource instance. Now, what this thing does is it actually asks the shared index informer to give us the particular resource here what we do is we actually check if that particular resource is created or if it's deleted if it was null the resource was deleted uh, if it is created or updated you would get a particular instance next what we do is we actually create a config map what we want as an output of this particular custom resource definition creation is we wanted to create a particular config map now if you go inside this we are creating a config map here and the most important part about this is that we are actually setting the ownership of this particular config map to this particular resource instance. 
this is the instance that we actually got as a part of the request. So what we are doing, we are creating this particular map and then we are making this resource instance as the owner of this particular map. Now what we are going to do is we are going to use a core API and create this particular config map. This part is only for the creation. Now what happens if it was an update? We would still get this particular resource instance. We would still create a map and then we would still actually try to create that particular config map. But this would then fail giving in this particular API exception. Now in this API exception, we will actually check for this code called as 409. Now what does 409 tells us that this particular resource has already been created. So then what we do is we know that the resource was already created. We now need to update it. So then we use the core API and we update this particular config map. So this is the basic reconciler part. The reason why when I created this config map, I set this particular ownership is when we get a particular delete request, we basically don't have to do anything. What happens is when a delete request for an instance comes in, Kubernetes automatically deletes all the resources who has this custom resource instance as the owner. So when we delete the resource instance, this config map will be automatically deleted. That's the reason we don't take care about part of deletion. So we don't have any handler for the deletion part. We just return this result as false. Now let's look at the controller bean. Now in the controller bean, we have to wire up all these stuff, right? So that's what we do over here. In this particular controller bean, we take the shared informer factory and we take the reconciler and the shared index informer. Here we actually specify using the builder, the consiler, a ready function such that when this particular controller is active, so this is active only when the shared index has been synced with the cluster. So whatever resources that have been created under the cluster are also synced in the cache of our controller. So this is it. This is how we actually create this particular controller. And then afterwards, we actually start the application here. So as a part of this application runner, so here we actually use an executor service, which actually starts the shared informer factory and then it runs the controller here. That's it. So this is actually running in a particular thread and now the controller is all. Now let's do one thing is let's first of all delete our resource instance that we created. So kubectl get my CRD and I'm going to delete this first. So kubectl delete my CRD, my custom resource instance. So this has been deleted right now, right? Let's actually look at our config map. So get config map and we don't have any config map, but this is the root config map that we have. Now what we're going to do, we're going to start this particular controller. So our controller has started and it's actually listening and watching actually for any changes. So what we are going to do now is we are going to create a custom resource instance. So kubectl apply my resource instance so now when i do this my resource instance gets created so kubectl get my crd this one got created and as a result of this what is going to happen is we are going to get a config map so if you see my config map has been created which we asked the controller to do so the controller actually created this particular config map for us right now let's look at this particular config map definition so kubectl edit config map and if you see here the owner reference that we have is my custom resource instance so that's the ownership that has been set over here right next let's actually edit this particular custom resource that we created right so kubectl edit and here let's just go and change this particular property to my first cdr instance and i'm going to specify two that's it i'm going to save this and this has been updated now if i edit this back again if you see here the generation has changed to number two because this is the next version that got generated of that particular resource instance let's go back here and let's look at our config map if i edit my config map you can see this one got the property my first crd instance two this is the property that was edited into a resource instance and it's also been updated into a config map here. So this has been done by the controller itself. Now let's go out and let's actually delete my custom resource instance. So when I delete this, let's see what happens to the config map. So get config map. And if you see here, the config map has disappeared. So 
In this entire video series, we saw how we can create a Kubernetes custom resource definition and then deploy it onto a Kubernetes cluster. We then created a Spring Boot application to create a Kubernetes controller to handle creations, deletions and updations of the custom resources. Now this entire video is completely inspired from a talk at Spring IO by Josh Long and Cora. I'm linking the video somewhere here. I keep on exploring such kind of things. So make sure you like this particular video and subscribe for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.